Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Imagine with me for a moment, total collapse. Total Teotihuacan. Total Teotihuacan. The end of the world as we know it. You're walking across a post-apocalyptic landscape, scrounging for everything that you need for your daily life. You see a building, the first building that you've seen in months. You go inside for shelter, for comfort, for safety. There's one room inside the building has scientific markings on it. There's electricity running into the room. There's still some lights on inside. You go in there, bright flashing lights, electricity. That was a time machine. You just walked into a time machine and now you're a hundred thousand years into the future. What are you gonna do now? Now it's even more total Teotihuacan. More total Teotihuacan. It's a post, post-apocalyptic landscape. There's nothing anymore. These peaches you see behind me, they're gone. Extinct. You do find one can, a can of delicious food. You open it up with your can opener that you happen to have in your pocket when you walk into the time machine. You open it up to delicious soup-like material. But you don't have a spoon. There's no spoons. Spoons are gone. Are you gonna suffer the indignity of trying to drink it out of the can? No. You need a spoon, but you don't have one. Are you gonna starve to death? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, asshole? step in making your own wooden spoon is getting some materials to work with. Uh, I have some, what is this, cherry? This is cherry wood right here. I took it and I just split it with my machete and uh, what we want to do is kind of create a rough sort of spoon shape. Not worrying about the, the pit in the middle there, but uh, uh, getting it just roughly into the form of a spoon with a handle. So I'm going to use this and I'm not going to do a great job because we're going to try to you know, go through this sort of quickly, just give you the, the high points, but I'm going to taper off the handle here. I think I'm going to make a long spoon. As you can see, we're going to taper down on this end, and this end up here is going to be the spoon end. There's a little bit of a, a knot in the wood right there. That'll be a bit challenging. Again, I'm not doing a super great job of this. If I wanted to be really precise, I'd pull out a smaller knife. Isn't that an Abraham Lincoln quote? If I wanted to do a really good job of this, I would, I would have pulled out a smaller knife. I think he said that. All right, so we're getting the handle down here. And obviously, in a collapse situation, spoons are not necessarily a critical item. And it's very easy to find spoons. There's thousands, unfortunately, of plastic spoons that are uh, you know, floating around our world. And the metal spoons that we have are gonna last a long time. But still, I think primitive living skills are rewarding and enriching. Those are the same thing. And they're enjoyable. And you don't, you, can't, you can do more than just make spoons with this. You can also make cups, bowls, and things like that. But I'm choosing to do a spoon today because it is simple. So. Just gonna get the handle tapered down here. Put it the other way. And we'll start shortening it up right around here. So I don't want to damage my spoon. I actually use the spoon all the time when I'm making soups and things. I like wooden spoons. Alright. You can see, I'm not gonna do any better than this at this point, but you can see basic tapered kind of handle, plenty of opportunities for splinters there, and this is going to be where we're going to make the, uh, I don't know, like the scoop part of the spoon. And we're going to use that, uh, do that using fire. The fire that we're going to be using today is from this ember. Now I pulled this ember out of a big wet um, you know, fire pit. It's been raining a lot. It's sopping wet and I've got it here in the parabolic solar cooker to cook off all the moisture and to get it red hot again. This thing should heat up pretty quickly, except that it's really cloudy out, so I'm not getting a huge amount of, uh, of heat on here at the moment. But let's see, do I get any red? A little bit of red. Let's let that cook a little bit longer, and then we're gonna put the ember right onto the spoon, and we're gonna start sculpting the spoon using fire. It's been cloudy for a while. I'm still waiting for that ember to heat up. 
I could use matches and whatnot, but I'd rather not waste a match. I'm going to be patient, and in the meantime, I figured I'd just clean this up a little bit more using just a little little knife here. If you've never whittled before, you know, it's important to always have a nice knife that you can get a firm grip on. Don't have it be all slippery or wet or anything like that. It's important to keep your tools sharp because then you don't have to force it through so much. And always, always, always cut away from your body. I mean, it's pretty simple. And away from your body doesn't mean this. I'm cutting it away from my form, my basic body form, and I'm towards my knee. Yeah, you want to be just completely away from yourself and away from anybody else, too. River's off at school right now, so he's not going to come walking by or anything, so... Because the worst thing you can do is go trying to make yourself a spoon and then cut off one of your fingers, because fingers are much more important tools than a spoon. I think so. So, this handle's starting to get nice and smooth. And like I said earlier, you can do... Uh, you can use this technique not just to create a spoon, I'm just do doing a spoon today because it's quick and simple and small, but you can use this technique to make a cup, to make a bowl, anything else like that. The idea is that we're going to use the fire to burn down into the wood to make that kind of uh, that trough area. And, you know, actually, I could make this a dual use thing. It could be a, a spoon slash, you know, shiv, shank, you know. Uh, sun's still thinking about coming out. There it is. So my, uh, my ember's starting to cook a little bit more. Once I get a nice red spot on there, and it's, it's burning on its own pretty well, I'm going to take it, place it right on this center area, and start putting air on it. Now you can, uh, can focus the air using a, a straw, or in our scenario where we're out into a distant apocalypt apocalyptic future, you can find a reed or anything like that, or you could just blow on it. But it ha sometimes helps to be able to focus the air using a straw or something like that. It also doesn't uh, require as much work on your effort. You don't go hyperventilating. But, you know, you can do it either way. Getting the bark off the back here. Now, of course, spoons are kind of a luxury item to some degree. But once you get yourself established in whatever circumstance you're in, I think it's just human nature to want to start refining your situation. Start working on those luxury items that make your, your daily life easier. So obviously while you could use your hands, or just pour things into your mouth, or uh, you know if you're using it as a cooking spoon, you could uh, obviously uh, you know just use a stick. Some of these luxury items are the things that just make life a little bit more pleasant. And I think, like I said, it's just human nature. We want to create these things for ourselves once we get all of our, our basic basic needs met. So that's starting to become kind of a nice nice form there. After I'm done with this, I could uh, take some stones, sand it down a little bit. It's pretty uh, pretty smooth as it is right now, though. Got another cloud coming in. I'm supposed to have thunderstorms later today. I'm not sure how much of this video I'm going to be fast-forwarding through and how much I'm not going to fast-forward through. One of, my, one of the common criticisms of my channel is that it's slow-paced. To that, I say if you can't handle a slow-paced life now, you know, paying attention to something that's maybe a little bit slower-paced, what are you going to do with all the hours and hours of, I don't know, boredom? in a post-collapse uh, post sort of era. I mean, sure, this the terrifying uh, scenarios people envision being chased by marauders or whatever, but I think most of the collapsed world would be just kind of dull. You know, it doesn't have to be dull. You know, if you've got people around you talking, hanging out, sharing stories and all that, but I mean, for the kind of person that doesn't like this kind of, you know, just chatting, sharing ideas, what are you going to do in a post-collapse era? Not everything only takes two minutes. So I might fast forward through some of this. But I like my channel slow. Because it makes it feel like the slower pace of camping, being outside, living with nature, getting away from all the hustle and bustle of the industrialized world that channels like this are discussing the
possible end of at some point. So I like slow pace. It's looking all right. So now I just need my ember to cooking over there. Looks like I've got the sun about to open up again here and give us some real sun. That'll be helpful. This piece of wood, by the way, I, I pulled out of my woodshed so it'd be nice and dry. Obviously, if you're going to be burning into it, you want it to be kind of on the dry side so you're not having to work through all that, that moisture. <sighs> Let's give it a try. Well, I finally got the, the ember going. Uh, took kind of a while. It actually literally took 48 hours for the sun to come back out. This is two days later. Uh, but the sun came out and I saved a match. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the hot part of the ember, putting it right on the spoon, and blowing the heat right onto here. The idea is that you want to burn away the middle of it, but preserve the edges. And the way that you do that is by heating, heating the middle while you take some water, you just got a bucket of water here, and you're applying water around the edges to keep them cool and to keep them from, from burning. So it's just a process of heating and keeping the outside edge wet enough that it's not going to burn through. It takes a while, but it gives you some time to think about how easy it is to have spoons, you know, without having to make them yourself. I'm going to cut ahead a little bit to... Uh, where I'm a little bit more advanced because this is a long process. Wow, I found a much easier way of doing this actually. Uh, normally, if you have a campfire, you would be taking embers out the way that I was mentioning, putting them on here, blowing the heat down into it. But I realize I have a giant parabolic solar cooker. I can just take the spoon. <laughs> it's already in flame. And just toast out the middle that way. Not that this is something that you necessarily have in a pinch, <laughs> carrying your giant parabolic solar cooker around with you. But for right now, this really speeds up the process. But the principle is essentially that you want to burn the middle out while you keep the edges moist. And I got my water bucket over here, and because this parabolic solar cooker is so hot, it is really, I have to really keep on top of these edges here. Keeping them wet and just letting the middle burn out. Now the next step here is that once we get this kind of charred out, I'm going to take a stone and kind of grind out the middle. Just a little rock I found on the ground. Grinding away at the, at the middle there. Blow it away. Just keeping those sides nice and wet so they don't burn through. And you can even have it come onto the top a little bit. I've used uh, mud also. Mud and stones put around the edge can be helpful. It's a little hard for a spoon but if you're making something larger, like a bowl, oftentimes you put mud and stones around the edges. You can really see the power of this parabolic solar cooker put to work here. If you do make a bowl, one thing you have to watch out for is the uh, the splitting of the wood. Isn't that what the kids are calling it today? The splitting of the wood. What are the kids today calling it? Uh, uh, splitting the wood. No one calls it splitting that anymore, the wood, Dad. Well, it's very important. You're a douchebag. Because obviously, if you have a crack in your bowl, it's not going to hold very much. Now, the, uh, what you can do is you know try to dry your wood out slowly, so that uh, you know you're not having that problem. But if you do find that you get little cracks and things like that, they can be filled in with. Uh, with sap or, or uh, you know, pine pitch, something like that. And we'll just keep poking away at this. And there you have it, a finished spoon. It's not the best spoon that I've ever made in my life. It started to burn around along the edges here a little bit, and that's when I kind of was figuring, well, I think it's good enough. But there's definitely a scoop here. I could use this to, you know, drink soup or water or anything like that. I would take this and take some sand, scrub off all the extra ash before I were actually going to use it, get it all kind of nice and cleaned up. You could put some wood oils into it to kind of help preserve it, but made my own spoon with just things that I found on hand. I know that I have a parabolic solar cooker rocking in this video to speed up the process, but the principle 
is accomplishable just with the ashes that I or the embers that I started with at the beginning. Put the embers in the middle, keep the edges of it moist, blow the heat down into it. I had a little straw I didn't end up using for kind of focusing your heat energy. Burn right down in there, and like I said, just keep the edges moist, keep it controlled, go slowly. You can make bowls, cups, or spoons. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.